So next we have Doctors Story, Thomas, and Whitmore's team. Good afternoon. I'm Allison Smith. I'm with Louisville Metro Government, and I've been working with our primary investigator, Dr. Angela Story, uh, Daniel DeCaro, David Johnson, and Lauren Heberly. So this represents the departments of anthropology, psychology and urban and public affairs, public health, and sociology. Our student researchers are Jeremy Jackson, Christopher Wales, Dewan Turner, Megan Morrison, and also Wyatt Campbell. And our community partners are local metro government, specifically the Office of Redevelopment Strategies and Advanced Planning, as well as the West Global Community Council. When we started this research project, we were interested in better understanding how historically disenfranchised groups perceive efforts by Louisville Metro government to engage them in planning efforts. Um, how successful an event is cannot be determined just by how many people were there or how many meetings were held. It is people's perception of the event that shapes their perception about Louisville Metro. So our research project aims to learn how people perceive different types of events from open houses to workshops um, to informational meetings and to find out what they hope to get from that meeting and then if they are satisfied with that result. Ultimately, this research will provide Metro with a tool to measure how well our community engagement events are perceived by the community and to help inform how we do community engagement. As you can see, our research team has been attending Metro community engagement events uh, ranging from the redlining Louisville dialogues comprehensive plan public forums, a Brownfields workshop, and the um, Heritage West Redevelopment public meeting. Now these events varied widely in terms of format as well as purpose and intent. We have three main aha moments. There's more than that, but I'm going to limit it to three today. First of all, it's not always about how you format the meeting. That is important, but there's more to it. What matters more is credibility. So what we have found in the early stages of our preliminary results is that the events that were perceived as being the most fair and the most on honest were when Metro partnered with a credible community organization, such as Youth Build or the West Global Community Council. Secondly, in our survey, we asked about people's past experiences with Metro public meetings and how that affected how they felt about this current one. And what we found is that even people who have a, a huge distrust of Metro because of previous experiences will still express an appreciation when they are at an engagement that they feel is currently authentic. So that tells me there is still hope. Um, <laughs> lastly, community engagement is messy. Um, no matter how much you prepare, where you hold your meetings, or who attends, at the end of the day, community meetings are led by real people and they're attended by re real people mm -hmm. with all their flaws, their passion, and their perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's in this context that our team will continue to try to understand how community engagement by Metro can be more accessible and more authentic. Thank you. Thomas from Middle and Secondary Education and our project is Transforming Learning Communities, a multi-year project supporting teachers of adolescents. My co-PIs are Dr. Chantel Crosby from the School of Social Work and Dr. Penny Howe also from Middle and Secondary Education. We have several students involved. Kirsten Eccles is now Dr. Kirsten Eccles from English. <laughs> Kiana Dow just completed her Master's in School Counseling. Catherine Maurer just completed her bachelor's degree and um, actually she has two. She got a <laughs> dual degree, a bachelor of arts in Spanish and a bachelor of science in teaching Spanish. And she is a Fulbright scholar. So she will be leaving our project to go to Spain. I'm going to introduce Sarah Cottrell who's going to introduce the rest of our student participants. Hi, my name is Sarah Cottrell, and I am one of the participants in this. Um, some of our other students who participated are Danielle Vincent, Sophie Dashmond, Brad Trent, Laquay Newby, Gina Passanisi, and Mary Pippin. 
um, along with five additional undergrad action researchers. We'll hear again from Sarah in a minute. Our community partners from Westport Middle School, Alice Naw, Anitria Swanson is with Jefferson County Public Schools, Damian Sweeney is with Seneca High School, and Judy Vanderhaar is with the Kentucky Department of Education. And our multi-year project was in designed to support new teachers, so this past year they were actually juniors in college as pre-service teachers, to be prepared and committed to create classroom climates to support diverse students and to confront the criminalization of young people in schools. So we included curricular transformation, initiated our three-year mixed method research, and also provided the students who are now action researchers themselves involved in the study with action research tools to help provide their um, ongoing development of research skills and abilities. So like many of you, we had many, many aha moments, but we, only, we chose a few to put here. Um, the one piece that we just continue to be amazed by is the power of community and reflection among our students. Um, while we were the instructors of, co of the course and they were there and, and so this semester they're not in the course, they're in other courses but we come together about once a month and so that was a really powerful piece. Uh, we were really excited to see our undergraduates um, ability to transfer kind of that information that they gained in our course into the classroom and talk about it and how it was changing their process their process of thinking about classrooms their actions with students so that was um, really significant to us um, we also really appreciate all the strengths that our students bring to the conversations that we have um, and we really want to use the skills that they have and the strengths to um, enhance the project so sometimes our interest has to take a back seat and we use those skills that our students are bringing there um, and I guess just consistently flexibility you know as a middle school teacher I used to say um, the F word is really important in middle school and it's flexibility and that comes with research as well I know all of you were thinking middle school F word I know um, it's okay um, but we're constantly you know having to, to rethink be flexible problems all around Number one, getting all these undergrads who are super, super busy to, to be able to meet together and then having questions that, um, you know, are, that are thought-provoking and, and to bring this community together. So, Dr. Thomas, do you have any questions? Oh, yes, Sarah's going to share some aha moments also. Um, probably the biggest aha moment I had during this is um, one of the major focuses we had in the course was talking about trauma-informed teaching which is something that um, I had never been taught before in an education course. So it was really special that we were able to delve into that topic. And while we were learning about that, I was able to look around and see all of the meaningful connections that I built with my peers and the community that we had built just as a course and as a community. And that made me think about, as a teacher, how I have the power to build a powerful, a strong community in my classroom. And that can make me a better teacher because it allows me to get to know my students and to notice when something is off about them and to really meet the needs of every individual student from a trauma-informed approach. And um, I think everybody else who participated in the study would really agree with that as well. Um, one of the major things is just building those communities, getting to know the students, and trying to meet the needs of every individual student um, the best way you can. Thank you. Thank you.